very warm welcome to Rihant Online Academy. In this session, we are going to discuss very very important multiple choice questions on deadlocks for operating systems. Question number one is which of the following condition is required for a deadlock to be possible? So for a deadlock to be possible, mutual exclusion should be there because you know that there are some conditions which are require, required to uh, make a deadlock possible. The very first one is mutual exclusion. It is necessary. The next one is a process may hold allocated resources while awaiting assignment of other resources. So you can say that it is nothing but hold and wait condition. And you all know that hold and wait condition is also required for mutual ex, uh, for deadlock. And the next one is no resource can be can be forcibly removed from a process holding it. So you all know that it is a no preemption condition. It is a no preemption condition and we already uh, we also require no preemption hold and wait and mutual exclusion in order to make a deadlock possible. So option D that is all of the above is the correct answer, right? The next question is what is a reusable resource? So you all know that reusable means we can uh, use that resource after the first use as well. So option A that can be used by one process at a time and is not depleted by that use means we can use by one process at a time and after that it should not be depleted means we can use it again. So option A is the correct answer. The next one is for effective operating system when to check for deadlocks. Option A every time a resource request is made. So do we check do we need to check every time a resource request is made? Yes. For effective operating system it is an it is required condition. At a fixed time interval, it is also required condition because at a fixed time interval, if you will check that where deadlock is there or not and after every resource request is also we can check so that our operating system would be very effective. So option C is the correct answer because we need to answer the most accurate answer. So option C is correct answer. The next one is the circular weight condition can be prevented by. So how can we prevent circular weight condition by defining a linear ordering of resources type using thread using pipes all of the mentioned now uh, defining a linear order if we can make linear order of a resource type means we can prevent circular weight condition by defining linear order of resource types option a is the correct answer guys okay the next one is which one of the following is deadlock avoidance algorithm so it is a very important name in the operating system that is banker's algorithm you all know that that banker's, banker's algorithm is used to avoid the deadlock option a is the most correct answer may this question asked many times in it it officer exam kvas pgt and once asked in ugc net as well okay guys so make note of it or you can also prepare a short lecture on banker's algorithm. If you are uh, eagerly want to prepare for banker's, banker's algorithm then we can make a lecture for you on your request. So please comment if you want to learn that as well. The next one is which one of the following is a mathematical way to determine the deadlock occurrence resource allocation graph starvation graph inversion graph or none so which of the following is a mathematical way resource allocation graph it is a mathematical way or you can also say that it is a visual way to determine that whether deadlock is occurring here or not so resource allocation graph is the correct answer the question number seven is what is the drawback of banker's algorithm so option a in advance processes rarely know how much resources they will need so it is a drawback because they don't know that how much process how much resources we need because if they will uh, they will earlier know nah, then we can avoid the uh, then we can avoid the deadlocks but we don't know in advance option b the number of processes change changes as time progresses so number of processes changes as time progresses it is also one of the drawback because uh, with time processes may come and may go so it is another drawback third one is resources once available can also disappear because may other process can use it or may it be busy so option d all of the above that is a b and c all are the drawbacks of bankers algorithm 
क्वेश्चन नंबर एट इज अ डेडलॉक इवेंचुअली की पल्स सिस्टम थ्रू आउट एंड विल कॉज द सीपीओ यूटिलाइजेशन टू इंक्रीज नो डेडलॉक नेवर मेक सीपीओ यूटिलाइजेशन इंक्रीज बट इट विल डिफेक्ट द प्रोसीजर सो इट विल ड्रॉप इट विल ड्रॉप द थ्रू पोर्ट दैट इज इट विल ड्रॉप द इफिशियंसी सो ऑप्शन बी इज द राइट आंसर टू अवॉइड डेडलॉक द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज टू अवॉइड डेडलॉक देयर मस्ट बी अ फिक्सड नंबर ऑफ रिसोर्सेस टू अलोकेट resources allocation must be done only once all deadlocked processes must be aborted inversion technique can be used so to avoid deadlock inversion technique can be used not a answer all deadlock must be aborted if you will abort na it will affect the processes as well and resource allocation must be done only once but if you will done only once and suppose processes are increasing then it may cause deadlock further so option a is the correct answer means there must be fixed number of resources to allocate the next one is to avoid deadlock there must be fixed number of resources to allocate okay guys already discussed i think with that repeated so guys please subscribe our youtube channel press the bell icon button have a very very nice day guys jai hind jai bharat and if you have any kind of doubts or queries just comment us i will try to solve them as early as possible